But the goodness of God is beyond all that. It overrides every data, every regression model, every confidence interval, everything that has been said. The goodness of God overrides it. Good afternoon, friends. Uh, we thank God for another opportunity to share His words. I want us to pray as we go into His word. Holy Spirit of wisdom, you are the spirit of wisdom. Today, we want to speak about you. We want to learn more about you. I ask that every person that listens today, every heart will receive a touch from you. Wisdom will cover us. Wisdom will be our shield. We will imbibe the spirit of wisdom. Your name will be glorified, our Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today we want to talk about the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Or the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Or just the spirit of wisdom. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, it says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. We are looking at this series of knowing the Holy Spirit more through his names. And one of the names that he is called is the spirit of wisdom. In Ephesians 1.17, the Bible calls him the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, 1 to 2, the Bible actually calls him here the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Isaiah 11, I read, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow forth of his fruits, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. There are seven names that the Holy Spirit is called here. The seven names are the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of Yahweh, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. These are seven powerful names and as we go on in our study about the Holy Spirit, we will still talk about more of these names and how we may know the Holy Spirit more by understanding His work and by understanding why He's called all these names. Now, wisdom is a principal thing. As the Bible says that wisdom is principal, in all your gettings you should get wisdom. And so it's very important that we imbibe the spirit of wisdom because He is as the Bible says, the one that actually bestows wisdom. When we look at wisdom, I, I, want, I want us to look at a number of misconceptions about wisdom and um, we look at what the Bible says about it. So one major misconception is that people are born wise or foolish. That is, a man is born with wisdom or with folly. That wisdom is, is something people are born with. You just say, oh, he just has that inherent ability to be wise. Now, the scripture supports that there are some people who lack wisdom. The scriptures say that. Whereas the scripture does not support that people who lack wisdom cannot improve on wisdom. It's not a, an all and non affair whereby you are just born with wisdom and then, well, that's all. If you are not born with wisdom, you live in folly all your lives. In the book of James chapter 1 verse 5, the Bible says, If any man lack wisdom, that is the Bible saying that some people lack wisdom. That's quite interesting. But it says, Let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So that misconception is not true. Yes, people might be born with different levels of understanding and different physical intelligence, but wisdom can be bestowed from above. Some people argue that wisdom cannot be taught. In the book of Job, chapter 32, verse 6 to 7, it says, And Elijah, the son, Elihu, the son of Barakel, the Buzite, answered and said, I am young, and ye are very old. Wherefore I was afraid, and does not show you my opinion. I said, This shall speak, a multitude of years shall teach wisdom. So traditionally, even in our own society, we believe that the older are wiser. But this just shows to tell us that wisdom can be taught. Wisdom can be taught. In Job 33, 32 to 33, God himself says, If thou hast anything to say, answer me, speak, for I desire to justify thee. If not, hearken unto me, hold thy peace, and I shall teach you wisdom. God the Almighty himself teaches men wisdom. 
God the Almighty himself can actually make you learn wisdom if you are open to. You remember Joseph in Egypt? The Bible in the book of Psalm 105 says that part of the things that Joseph did in Egypt was to bind the princes at his pleasure and to teach his senators wisdom. Wow. I wish Joseph was around. I think some of our senators need to be taught the wisdom of God. Because that was what Joseph was doing. He needed to teach and he taught the senators of Egypt. He taught them wisdom. The greater teacher, however, is the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible in the book of 1 Corinthians 2.13 says, Which things we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. So the Holy Ghost, when you ask him to come into your life and, and he begins to walk with you and you understand him more, he teaches you wisdom. And he has, he does have a very unique way of teaching wisdom. The Bible calls it a comparison. It says it compares spiritual things with spiritual. So yes, can we increase in wisdom? Yes, the answer is we can increase in wisdom. Luke 2 52 talks about our Lord Jesus Christ and it says, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So you never get to the point where you no longer need wisdom in this life. For you to say that, then it means that actually you are acting in folly. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom. The one that bestows wisdom on us. The one that opens our minds and walks through us. In our previous studies, we spoke about how the Bible refers to different spiritual beings. And we said that spiritual beings sometimes are referred to based on the influence they produce in individuals that they take over. And that is part of it today. He is a spirit of wisdom. When he comes into you, he gives you wisdom. Can wisdom be corrupted? Again, the answer is yes. About Babylon in Isaiah 47, 10, the Lord was saying to them, say, For thou hast trusted in wickedness, thou hast said, None seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it has perverted thee, and thou hast said in thy heart, I am, and no one else beside me. Wisdom can be perverted. Ezekiel 28, 14 to 17 says, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have said this, so thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee. That was talking about the devil. His wisdom was corrupted. He was perfect until this iniquity was found in him. So wisdom can be corrupted. Wisdom can definitely be corrupted. You see a lot of people, they start off in church. They start off walking with the Lord and they develop wisdom. But as they get higher and higher, especially I hear they say people in academia that mm, if you really want to do good, you need something more than just the ordinary. It's not true. If you need anything more than the ordinary, it is a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because he improves your wisdom. He increases your wisdom. And look at the devil. His wisdom was corrupted. This just brings me to a common teaching in Christendom today where people say the devil was an angel. As you can see, he was not an angel. He was a cherub. Cherubs are different from angels. Cherubs are also different from seraphims. And if you look at the person or the being that Isaiah saw in, in Isaiah, it was a seraph. Now, cherubs usually will have two wings. In most of the descriptions of cherubs in the Bible, they had two wings. And the Bible says that they were the ones at the Garden of Eden, Genesis 3.24. It says he drove man out and he placed at the east gate of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned on every side. And when they were designing the temple, on the Ark of the Covenant, there was the image of cherubs. And you can see from what the Bible says that the devil was the anointed cherub that covered it. So cherubs usually were beings that were around the throne of God. And as it is replicated in the temple and in the tabernacle and in the making of the Ark of the Covenant, that the cherubs were on top, layered with gold, and they stretched their hands. Usually, they usually will have two wings. But they are very different from seraphims. The descriptions of seraphims that you will see, you will see seraphims, some of them with six wings. 
In the book of Isaiah 6, 2 to 3, it says, Above it stood seraphims, each one has six wings, with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he did fly. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. So anyway, don't let's digress too much. The devil wasn't an angel. He was a cherub. So there are three sources where man can get his, his wisdom from. There are three sources. Number one, you can get human wisdom. You can get human wisdom. You can get intelligence. You can be taught. You can go to school. You can learn to read and write. You can develop yourself. You can get human wisdom. <laughs> Number two, James 3, 15 to 16 says, The wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly and sensual and devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every work of evil. So number two, wisdom can come from the devil. But you saw what happened to his wisdom. Number three is the one we are talking about today. The spirit of wisdom. You can have wisdom by having the Holy Spirit, having a relationship with him, having him direct your way, having him teach you what to do. 1 Corinthians 2.13 says, We think so, we speak not in words of man's wisdom, but the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual. In Job 28.12-13, to 13, it says, But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man went not the price thereof, neither is there found in the land of living. Now, to get wisdom, what Job was saying here is usually there is a price to pray. A man does not become wise by just sleeping every day. In whichever of these three sources of wisdom, you have to work at it. If you want to get human wisdom, you go to school. You study. And God bless you. <laughs> you do well. Then you get your certificate. And then you learn. The most important thing is to develop a mind, a thought mind that is framed by wisdom and learning. You can ask the devil. He will give you his corrupted wisdom. And the same way the Holy Spirit, you have to walk closely with him. You have to understand him more. And you have to you talk to him. We just ignore him. We don't talk to the Holy Spirit. He just stands there. But he's the spirit of wisdom. And you need wisdom. You need wisdom. 